Hello and welcome. In this video we'll take a look at CADWorks PNID. I'll show you how to get started for the very first time and how to set up a CADWorks PNID project including the database from scratch. We'll also then take a look at some of the drafting capabilities and we'll start drafting a simple PNID. So let's get started. Now, as we saw in the first video, when you launch CADWorks for the very first time, we see the initial drawing environment dialog box. Once again, I'm going to choose metric measurements with imperial nominal pipe sizes. And now in CADWorks, I see the CADWorks PNID ribbon. So let's take a look at some of the key features to set up and get started. First of all, I'm going to take a look at the file manager palette, which is this icon here. In the CADWorks PNID file manager, we can see various different projects and historical projects that we've used. And we can also set up and create a brand new project, which is what I'm going to do here. This button allows me to create a brand new PNID project. The first thing to choose is the type of database that we're going to connect to. I'm going to choose Microsoft Access. Of course, as you see, we can also choose Oracle or SQL Server. Whichever one you choose, the process here is broadly the same. So I need to now browse to my project folder, which I've already created a folder. I'm just going to navigate to that file location and give the project database a name. Once you've selected the project folder, the table setup button becomes enabled. In here, we can set up and configure the database tables and the fields within those tables. On the left-hand side, we see a list of the tables available. CADWorks has a number of standard tables, which is why the edit and delete icons are sometimes disabled. To add a new table, simply hit the add button. For each table that is selected in the left-hand list, we then see the list of available fields on the right-hand list. Configuring these is simple using the Add, Edit or Delete buttons. I won't configure anything here. I'm going to stick with the standard setup, but it's fairly self-explanatory how to set up and create new columns and new tables. Then I'll click OK and the project has been created. The next thing to do then is to create a new drawing. I'm going to create a drawing with a database using the button on the PNID file manager. And I'm going to place this in the same folder that I just created where the project is located. And I will give this PNID a name, PNID 001. This is now connected to the database. So anytime I add an item, a new row will be added in the appropriate table in the database. The first thing I will do though is insert a drawing border. There's various ways we can do this. I'm going to do this using the CADWorks setup dialog box. Within here, we can set the nominal size and specification, although that is optional for PNID. We can insert the drawing border, which I'm going to do in a second, and we can also set the layers and edit the configuration file, which I won't go into detail here. So I'm going to click on border, add in a predefined border from the out of the box drawing borders available. Of course, you can create and use your own DWG border. And I'm going to hit OK. For the minute, I won't fill in any of the border attributes. Okay, now we've added the border, let's insert some symbols. I'll start with the major equipment. So I'm going to start by placing a vessel. All of the symbols available are on the ribbon here. So the vessels icon provides me the available vessels in the current symbols library. I'm going to choose a vertical vessel with elliptical ends with a skirt. And then I just position the vessel. The drawing routine for the vessel is Straightforward, I place the rectangle, the heads are placed automatically, and then I now attach the skirt. The vessel symbol also has a tag item and a label item associated with it, so I will position those as appropriate. And now I can fill in some of the data. 
So double clicking on the component brings up the edit component dialog box, as we see here. Here I can enter in various information. I could maybe enter in the length, 3.5 meters, the OD, 1.8 meters, and the tag. Let's call this V201. Under the additional data button are all the additional fields that were set up and created in the table setup screen when we created the project. For the minute, I won't fill anything in here. So here is our vessel with the tag and label showing the attributes, which are yet to be completed. Let's now insert a nozzle. So hit the nozzles button, select from the available nozzle symbols. I'm going to choose this one here, a flange nozzle without a blind. And I'm going to position this close to the top of the vessel. Now CADWORKS pin ID uses the snaps, so I can easily attach the nozzle onto the vessel. Attaching the nozzle symbol onto the vessel automatically groups the items together, as you can see when I hover over. I can also double click to access the nozzle set, nozzle dialog box. Next, I'm going to insert the pump. I will select the pump symbol. The pump symbol I want is this centrifugal pump. And again, I'll position this where appropriate. Picking the rotation and the pump also has a tag and a label associated with it. So I will position those two items as well. I'll double click on the pump and give this a name. P101. Okay, next in this simple pin ID, I'll draw a process line connecting from the pump to the vessel, from the pump discharge nozzle to the vessel. Again, there are various different uh, available lines within CADWorks, all completely configurable. The most commonly used lines though are these ones on the icons here, the major, primary and secondary, and the minor, primary and secondary. I'll choose a major primary process line. And I'll start from the pump discharge nozzle and go across and connect up to the nozzle on the vessel. Once I hit enter to finish, as you can see, the flow arrows are placed automatically at each vertex of the line. And if I double click on the process line, I could then add a tag. However, for a more consistent tagging, I'm going to configure a line numbering system. I'm going to select the line numbering system icon on the ribbon over here. And I will now set up my line numbering system. So to do this, I can choose from any available category in the process lines table in the project database. I already have size and spec in there, so I'm going to add a couple more categories. Let's say, let's add count, and let's add a service value as well. I'll add some separators to make the line number a bit easier to read. And then I'll use the move up and move down buttons in the list to adjust the order of those fields. So let's move spec right down to the bottom and then let's move count down below service. So I have size, service, count and spec. Now, the last thing to do in this dialog box is to make sure that the line numbering system is turned on, like so. So now I'm double clicking back on the line and I can fill in something. Maybe I'll say this is a six inch line for the nominal size. For the spec, I will leave that for a second and I'll go to the additional data page and I'll fill in the service. Um, let's just call this ABC and the count one, two, three. Click OK, and there you can see the line number, the tag has almost been completed. There's just the spec that is missing. 
For the spec, I'm going to pick that from the specification project. So I'm going to go to the size spec section of the ribbon and load up a specification. As before, I'm going to pick from the out of the box supplied specifications and I'm going to pick the standard metric inch specification project file. And from within here, I'm going to pick the ANSI class 150 metric inch specification 150M. Now, once that spec is set, I can then assign that to a selection of components. Of course, I only have the process line, but I'm going to assign that spec to the entire process line. Now, when I double click, we can see the spec has been assigned, the line number, the tag has been completed. And the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to label that, annotate it onto the drawing by using this function here to tag the line and pick the line and select the orientation of the tag. Like so, the tag data is picked up from the selected process line. Okay, let's add some inline items now. I'm going to add a flanged valve here. So I'm going to pick from the flange valve icons and on the pump discharge line, as is typical, let's insert a check valve, a flanged check valve from the symbols library. Insert that, again, attach it onto the line. As you can see, the line is automatically trimmed back to fit the flanged valve in. And I will finish this off by just giving this a tag CK1. Next, I'm going to place a reducer. Before I place the reducer, I'm going to set the main and reduction sizes. So I'll set, as we've already seen, a six inch main size and a four inch reduction size. And then on the reducers icon over here, I'm going to select the reducer, pick the concentric reducer symbol from the library and insert this close to the pump discharge nozzle. I'm picking the direction. When I place the reducer, I then get a prompt from CADWorks saying, would you like to change the highlighted components, which is just this small section of pipe, to the reduction size four inch? And I'll say yes. This is now from the tooltips, as we can see, four inch line. Okay, let's now finish this PNID by simply adding the second pump. I'm going to do this by copying the first pump and just using the standard copy command to create the second pump. Let's say here, the pump tag is removed to avoid duplicate tags. And we'll then give the pump a new tag P102. And I'm also going to change the tag on the check valve CK2 and finish off by inserting the remaining process line that's missing like so. Now we're almost complete here however the process line this one here doesn't have yet a tag. So what we want to do is this is all, of course, one single process line, even though it's multiple entities in the drawing. So we can use the function combine lines to combine these individual process lines into a single process line. So we run combine lines. The first thing to do is select the first process line and then select the remaining entities to combine, which will be the new items. Because we have a reducer, we need to tell CADWorks which is the reduction side. So I'll select the section of process line on the reduction side of the highlighted reducer. And then the same for the main side of the reducer. And there we have the updated process line now with the correct tag. And as you can see, once I double clicked, all the process line is selected. Finally, let's add one more valve to complete the PNID. I'm going to add another regular flanged valve and I'll just add a gate valve and I'll place this close to the vessel. And let's give this a tag, K1. 
gate valve three. And there's my completed PID. So there we have the basics of a simple PID. I hope you found that useful. Why not take a look at some of the other components or symbol types that we have available, or take a look at the project database itself. Remember, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us.